Hey everyone, before this video starts, I'd like to give a special thank you to all my Patreon and Twitch subscribers. If you'd like to learn how to support this channel, possibly for free, just hang out till the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. All right, I think I want to actually watch this video and do commentary on it. This is the, uh, this is a little old. It's, all, it's not that old, actually. This is the guy who said that there were too many bad white people or too many, like, people of color in the Batman movie. And uh, let's talk, let's watch it, let's do a review on it. It's from a RK Outpost Live, which I think is a smaller channel. Like, I think he has another channel. But okay. Whoa. Hey, right off the bat, he's already appropriating black culture by using that jingle at the beginning, guys. So we got to cancel this guy for cultural appropriation. What is going on, guys? I just literally okay. just walked out of the theaters here. I just saw the Batman the in IMAX. And uh, listen, it's a very long movie. I was tense basically the entire time. I'm going to walk back to the car, process my thoughts, and I'm going to give you a fresh out of the theater review slash reaction. It's going to be spoiler free, at least for the first little while. So let me walk back and then we're going to think about this. All right, we have officially made it back to the car. I had about a five minute walk back all right, all right. to kind of gather my thoughts. And honestly, I still don't really know what I want to say. Um, here's what I do know about the Batman. Yeah. I think it's a really good movie. Me too, I, I thought agree. that I would like it going in, and I did. I really liked it. I don't know if the general audience is going to be super receptive to it. I, I've always. I mean, I feel like everybody loved it. <laughs> like, that's not even true. Everybody loved the Batman movie. I thought it was pretty good. Um, yeah. I mean, I have my own review on my channel, so. He's maintained when we saw the way this is marketed. I think 75 to 80% of people are going to love this movie. I think that's a lot of people. That's a... Okay, you can have 20 whatever. to 25 that really dislike it for a variety of reasons. Okay. It is not super consumable. I'll say that off the bat. It is not a two-hour package, laugh, you know, bright colors Marvel movie. It's really just not that. <laughs> That's fair, because there are people who... <laughs> there's people who are like, where the fuck are the jokes, like in the Marvel movies? I've seen so many of the reviews say, oh, it's dark, it's grounded, oh, it has seven vibes, Zodiac vibes. He does kind of look like uh, Daniel Larson, yeah. That's obviously, all of that's true. You can tell that from the trailers. Matt Reeves himself told us that's the feel he was going for. The first hour of the movie is just really fucking tense. It, you're, you're, I feel like you're tense through the entire thing. The way it was shot and the score, really good. Cinematography on this is top notch. Some great shots to make sure that in that first hour of the movie, you are intimidated as hell by Robert Pattinson's Batman. And I wasn't intimidated at all. I was just a little horny, you know? So. And I could listen to the Batman theme over and over and over again in my head. It did have a three hour runtime. It didn't really seem like that. I didn't really want to leave. I wasn't bored at all. My eyes were kind of glued to the screen the entire time. That's all. My ass fell asleep personally. It was a good indication that I'm, I'm very riveted and intrigued in the movie. I definitely was in this. It keeps you guessing. There are several times where you think you have it figured out and you don't. I will say one thing with the bat with with Robert Pattinson. Is it Pattinson? I don't care if I'm saying it right. Um, I thought he was gonna, uh, the the I think the reason that he did well is because you go into it expect like he's a he's gonna be a fucking emo Batman. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what you're looking for. You're looking for an e like he. If, when I heard Robert Pattinson, I'm like, okay, if they make it like a more emo Batman, this will go great. And that's what they did, and it was great. I thought he was. I thought it was great. They wrote the the Batman role for him, or maybe they they pulled him into this Batman role because that's what they wanted it to go with a little bit more of like a little bit of like an edgier like, you know what I mean? Like one of those emos, like the, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like the what they kind of whip their hair out of their face. That's I was like, yeah, that's what it. Did. And it was great. Which is also a good thing. Not necessarily subverting expectations type of thing, but this is a mid I think it definitely subverted expectations, especially at the end. I mean, spoiler alert, guys. <laughs> um I think it definitely did subvert expectations. I think it was great. They portrayed Batman as like a really good character, very intelligent, uh, very smart, very like methodical, like a kind of like a detective's Batman kind of a thing. Um, but he still got kind of outsmarted by the scarecrow at the end. And I thought that was really good. And you, there was like a little bit of shocking. I will say the end end was was off putting to me. The whole the, the detective aspect was really good. Like the investigation part was amazing. I loved the whole thing. I loved the energy. And then at the end, they just like went ballistic and they turned it into a, basically like a mass shooting type scenario. I say scarecrow. I meant the fucking. I meant the Riddler. Sorry, dude. My bad. Um. But they definitely just decided for no reason to just turn it into a fucking you know World War Three at the end. So, okay. All right. I said Scarecrow. I'm sorry, guys. I meant the Riddler. I meant the jokester. Okay. The jokester. Mystery. This is a detective movie with a detective Batman. That's what was promised. That's what they delivered on. And in that, I think it was really good. There were a couple things that bothered me, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But overall, uh, Robert Pattinson as Batman, I think he nailed it. Uh, I think he did exactly what Matt Reeves was asking him to do. Oh my god, Mama God, you fucking bastard. Mama God goes, honest question. How can there be spoiler alerts if all super movies are legit always the same? 
<laughs> I mean, what do you mean? It's like we kind of know how it starts and ends ish. It's hey, it's Batman, but like, what do you? It's a different Batman story. What are you talking? I, I, we've had this argument in person. I mean, you're just insane, okay? Again, the way they shot it, some of the scenes, he's vicious, he's intimidating, he's brutal, and he definitely is Batman. He doesn't want to be Bruce Wayne. You can tell that, that that's the feel they were going for. They yeah. delivered on that. I am looking forward to see Robert Pattinson playing the Batman again. The other big actors in this, Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman, I didn't know how I'd think about her. I really didn't. I'm not a huge, I don't like race swapping at all for any reason whatsoever. It's kind of inexcusable. However, uh, Zoe Kravitz did, I think she did a great job kind of embodying that character even more. Okay, so this is the race swapping argument, and this is why I wanted to watch it, because it's a, it's an argument that I think we need to explore. A lot of people are calling this guy racist. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. Okay, I don't know if I'm going to need paint, but I'm going to open it up anyway. Okay, so the general argument here is that I don't, not me, I actually thought it was fine. But the general argument was like, oh, we don't like race swapping because um, we think it's 100% a reaction to or trying to appear more woke. That's what it is. Like, you know, we, we just we think that you're just trying to be woke when you race swap and it's not actually a genuine thing. That's the argument behind race swapping. Um, so no, no, we don't like race swapping. Right. Because you're just trying to be woke. You just want to be woke. Um, and the other and usually that comes hand in hand with like make another character, make a new character. That's what we're going to put over here. The thing is, is that this kind of conflicts with the general ideology of people who are like, I don't really care about race. Because if you don't care about race, then it shouldn't matter if you change the race of a character. The race in no, in almost no role is ever relevant to that character, right? So they had uh, Detective Gordon. He was black. It was fine. I think as long as you don't like go, Bl black guy as long as the movie doesn't scream that he's black at you who cares they're just they just changed the character to black they changed catwoman to i don't know i guess hispanic i don't know i don't really know what race she is um they but they didn't make a point to tell us at all which is fine i don't think it matters who gives a singular fuck the only issue i had was when they decided to say Oh, when she made that dumb one-liner about how fucking white, rich white men are evil, basically. That was annoying. It was just an annoying thing. That was just annoying, and I'll explain to you why. Everybody in the entire world, really, can identify with class issues. So we can identify with that class issue and be like, look, rich people are kind of fucking us over, right? Especially now, people are feeling the squeeze. It's something that we could all galvanize around and change the system. No middle-class white person is like, well, my boss isn't paying me really well. And he's keeping all the money, but at least he's a white guy keeping the money. Am I right? You know, fuck N words. It's not, that's not what's happening. Right? Not to get too into it, but I think one of the, one thing is, is that a lot of white people, they don't identify with their whiteness. I don't identify with my whiteness. And it's because I've never had an issue in my life where like I was uh, persecuted for being white. At least I didn't, at least not, at least knowingly. All right. There have been, there's been no pattern of me being shit on for being white. Okay, so white. So like when you bring out this thing, it's like, oh, it's rich white people. You're trying to draw this comparison between like, oh, it's all white people's fault that like rich white people. It's an annoying thing that just ends up dividing people over class issues. It's not something that makes any actual sense. And that's the thing that bothered me. But generally speaking, the whole like you should never race swap a character ever. It's like, I don't think it's racist, but I think it's really ignorant. It's like, why are you so uncomfortable? And a lot of times what they'll say is like, make a new character. They'll say, just make a new character. The problem with just make a new character is it's very difficult to create a brand new character and completely establish them regardless of whether they're of any race in general, especially in these fields. And so it makes more sense instead of be like, well, let's just make a new entire new superhero that's black to just be like, oh, what if we just change the race of the person? Like, who cares? It, the race was never relevant. So why does it matter? It shouldn't. The actors were great. Everything was fine. There was nothing. Nobody screamed, I'm a black guy. They didn't decide to make Detective Gordon a fucking, like, they didn't decide to make him, I don't know, the fucking a gangster or anything. I don't know, something racist. They didn't, like, stereotype him. They didn't make him, like, a stereotypical black person or something. I don't know what you'd have an issue with. 
Who cares? They just made the guy fucking black. They didn't change like his entire persona. He was just happened to be black in the city. They didn't even introduce like an element of racism in there. He didn't experience any racism for being black, which I think was good and refreshing, even though there were a ton of Italian people because Italians are fucking racist. <laughs> but they didn't even make a point to point out race at all in that show or the movie, except for the one time that Catwoman had a fucking racial meltdown. <laughs> Right, so it doesn't matter. They did it in what I would say was like a solid way. They just fucking changed the race of the guy, and they just kept writing the movie. The movie could have been fucking done by literally anybody. Could have been done by any person. All right, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. Anyway, walking like like a cat, she was very feline in her approach to it. I Bro, like it bothered me that she just drank a whole thing of milk. Gross. This movie, she did not upstage Batman at all. If anybody was worried about that, didn't happen. Uh, she does save him one time. She He saves her probably four or five times. Uh, and Batman is the one who is telling her that she has kind of lost the way she's lost her moral compass, not the other way around. So I think that was very, very good. Jeffrey Wright didn't blow me away. I think it was fine as Commissioner Gordon. Uh, I thought he was great. I just liked, I like him as an actor in general. I thought he was fantastic. I, I Again, don't fucking race swap characters. See, that's the part to me where you can, you can make an argument of like racism. Not because he doesn't like race swapping, but because he didn't like the acting from him. Um, and then he he makes sure he reinforces that one of the reasons is because he doesn't like race swapping. So to me, you might be able to make like an argument of like, well, okay, so that you didn't like it because you were so upset by race swapping, it made it ruined the performance for you. That might be racist. I don't know if I would go like hard line, oh my god, he hates black people, because I don't think that's true at all. But that would be like I think that's like a little bit of like a red flag. It's like, okay. Who cares? He did a great job. He was fantastic. I like him as an actor in general. <clears throat> I think he's great. I think he was perfect. Uh, but I, I didn't think, see anything special about him. He's a great actor, but I didn't. I, it wasn't like he was crazy good to me. Why does he have to be crazy good? That's the thing. That's one of those things. Why does the expectation have to be he was crazy good? Why? Why couldn't he have just been a good actor? You know, like I think he did great. I liked him a lot. In this, Colin Farrell's penguin was unrecognizable. He did a great job, uh, but the makeup and <laughs> hey, the white guy did great. Personally, I didn't even know it was Colin Farrell. I, that took it away from me a little bit. I feel like they should have shown that he was still Colin Farrell. It was a weird idea to do, you know, because I never knew it was him, and I feel like that's a bad thing. I should, I should have done the makeup in the way I knew it was like fat Colin Farrell, you know. Next team did a great job making him not look like Colin Farrell in any way, shape, or form. Andy Serkis is offered. We needed more of it. We needed more of it. There's some, there's something that happens about halfway through the movie that's very. I wasn't a huge fan of the, of the, of the. Of Alfred and that, and that, to be honest with you, so. powerful and impactful with Alfred, and I feel like we needed more of him in the first half of this movie. One of my complaints, a couple other complaints that I have, and they have to do a little bit with identity politics. And there was one line that was in this movie that really threw me out of it. It is when Catwoman basically is yeah, saying they only care this. about themselves. These white privileged people. You didn't need to use the word white. You could have just said privilege, and that would have basically done the job. But they said white privilege. Yeah, rich, rich, privileged people would have been totally fine. I agree with that. Privileged people is very distinct, very much stood out. It bothered me. It took me out of it. It's not something that needed to be done, but they threw it in there. I think it was way too on the nose. Didn't like it. Another thing, and this is a little bit of a spoiler, I guess. So warning for spoilers. It's not a major one, okay. but there were only a couple good people <laughs> in this in this movie. You had Bruce Wayne, Batman, and you had Alfred. Those are the only two good white people. All right. Those are the only two good white people. Um, the rest of the really the three other major players that I would consider like overall like moral good people were, you know, you had Jim Gordon, who's black in this. You had Catwoman, who's not white in this. And then you had the mayor, who's a black woman. Yeah, I, who cares? Hey, who gives a shit? Like, why does that matter? So, again, so when it comes to this argument, people are like, oh, <sighs> okay. So when this argument is usually presented, the idea is that they create a movie with a heavy undertone of like, we don't like white people and a huge ton of identity politics in it. Outside of the one Catman uh, thing or Catman, the one thing that Catwoman had said, there wasn't really full of a bunch of like id poll in here. Okay. So there was no undertone of we hate white people in this movie outside of that one, that one offline, which was just uncomfortable. <laughs> So it doesn't really matter how many good white or black people there are. It's irrelevant. This movie, I think, did a good job of just proposing characters that were just people and their race didn't have any matter in it. So the number of good white people is wholly irrelevant. Who gives a shit? It really does not matter. It means nothing. 
at all. Again, very much on the nose for current day Hollywood. Did not like that. Took a couple, took a little bit off the score for me, to be honest. Overall, it is a little bizarre that it was so upsetting to him. Like, he really bothered him a lot. I don't think, I think that he has a very shallow perspective of what he's saying. He had, like, this is, these are general talking points from people. Uh, they're very shallow talking points that usually are reactionary to like woke ideology in Hollywood. Okay. And that's fine that you have that because there definitely are examples of movies that are like far too woke and blah, 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 blah. And they go too far trying to like propose an anti-white like perspective. But this movie didn't do that. So you have no foundation for your argument other than skin color. So it's very sussy. In fact, my explanation gives you a tremendous amount of like benefit of the doubt. My experience with it is an 8 out of 10. I think this is an 8 out of 10 movie. I think it's a really fucking good movie. You know, I don't know how... There's just too many black people in it. Like, what is the... Why is it... How much if you're coming in there looking for a Batman movie and you think that this should be like what we've seen over the past decade with superhero movies, you might walk out a little bit disappointed. I think it was really good. Again, there's some twists and turns in this thing and it sets up this franchise in this, this trilogy, which is what I think it'll be to go on for a while. They took a lot, I, I think, from different comic book runs. Long Halloween, definitely a, an inspiration. I think they even handed out, they even handed out a Long Halloween special comic book at the, the showing that I went to. Uh, it was like a special fan preview at Regal Cinemas. Got to see it on IMAX. Uh, this, the score is awesome. I can't overstate that. I love the music. Well, maybe- Outside of the, of, the, of the race swapping, what did he find that hurt the movie to a point where it was only an eight out of 10 for him? Not so much uh, some of the music- Because he's been speaking so positively about the movie overall. But the score, when it's an actual score, I love it. I could listen to the Batman theme all day. So overall, I think that it's good. There were a couple cameos and I'm gonna go ahead and spoil spoil this right now. Um, so if you if you don't want to be warned, you know, black people in my white Gotham is that the next superhero is gonna be the next uh, ant not superhero villain is gonna be <laughs> what the fuck? Or if you don't want to be spoiled, here's your warning. At the end, they have the Riddler talking to someone who's going to be the Joker. Yeah, the Jokester. Him. Yep. So yeah, it was horrible, by the way. The cringiest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. It was his laugh was terrible. It was horrible. It was terrible. Whoever they decided to hire was was doo doo diarrhea. That's coming. Um, also, sorry, there was a not, cameo sorry. that if you're a Batman fan, you're gonna know Thomas Elliot. Hush. Very clearly, it was thrown in there. That's gonna be something that could potentially happen down the road for this. So, they got a lot of potential. Overall, I think it was a really good movie. I liked it. I'll probably do a more spoilery discussion, long form. I'm not good at these. I just sit in my car and fucking talk. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know if you're interested in seeing this movie. Um, from what I'm describing, does it sound like you're going to like it? Let me know. I guess one thing I didn't really talk about was the action. I thought the action sequences were good. He's a little too bulletproof. We saw that from the trailers a little bit. All right, there we go. An actual criticism. I mean, that's fair. He was quite bulletproof. Yeah, it was a little bit jarring. He quite literally had plot armor. <laughs> it's a little ridiculous. I mean, spoiler alert, he got fucking blown up and he didn't take any time. Bro, you know what was really bothered me? There was a, a scene where he's like running away from some people and he turns his suit into a flying squirrel suit, which was already weird enough. It was already bad. It was weird. I was like, okay, this is weird, but I could see the utility in it, so I'm okay with it. And he flew down. Right. And he goes to he he flies down, but he kind of like he ends up hitting the underside of a bridge and then blasting into the top of a bus and then getting thrown into, I think, like a light pole or something or on like the floor. And then he gets up and he walks away and there's no recovery time. It was insane. It was a, there were some aspects to it that were just like, fucking why, bro? Like, what fucking why? Why? It was weird. It, it was just it just didn't make any sense. Like he did he he quite literally like you could have just not had those scenes happen. You know, yeah, he would like literally die and then he would get up and be like, I'm fine. And then there was one point where he got shotgun blasted in the in this in the fucking right in the fucking belly or whatever. And he flew backwards, and I'm like, okay, no internal bleeding. And then he gets up and he does some heroin and he pu puts it into himself and he's like, oh, I'm gonna get you. It was probably adrenaline, and people were like, Well, he did that in like the comics. That's fine. You never established that he was doing taking shots of adrenaline beforehand. So it was just like, oh, plot plot point. Oh, I got shot of uh, adrenaline. Like we never established he had it. It didn't really make any sense. In some of the comic book runs, they talk about how Bruce Wayne is like a, an a he's like an addict sometimes. Like he's on painkillers constantly. He's constantly bruised and fucked up and beaten up. So we just saw like Robert Pattinson is invincible. That's his superpower. <laughs> 
It's not even the he just fucking won't take damage. He just got a massive healing factor recovery. But for the most part, really dug all of the action sequences. But most of all, the detective stuff was spot on. Um, the the way that they do keep you on the edge of your seat and guessing and tense through the whole thing, I think it's really great. Let me know what your thoughts about this are in the comments below. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, share this video out there, and I'll talk to you later. I think that um, they should have had an intermission so I could pee. Because I ended up, end up missing a few, a few minutes of the movie because I had pissed so fucking bad. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone, go down to the links below where you can sub on my Patreon, which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub, if you have Amazon Prime, to subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.